Hi, welcome to Dive Source. Uh, today we're going to show you something that we do here in the back, which is uh, dive computer testing. Uh, we also do this on watches, depth gauges, uh, cameras, um, housings that you want to check to see if they're waterproof. So if you look over here, we have our depth testing chamber. Uh, this chamber is good to uh, 300 feet of depth and it is obviously very sturdily made and this is about a two thousand dollar instrument uh, but we use this to every time we do a battery change on a computer we uh, put it in the pressure pot we take it down to depth we test it for uh, the depth to see if it's accurate as well as to check if anything's leaking and we do the same thing we do a watch battery change uh, it's quick, we kind of feel it's critical so what we're going to do today is kind of show you uh, what you see on your dive computers as you go down uh, we have two of them in here we just did a battery change for, same model, and uh, we're going to start taking them for a dive. So come along and uh, don't forget to clear your ears on the way down. So what we're doing right now is we're introducing some air into the chamber. And uh, the chamber actually pressurizes the water that's in the pot and then from there it starts to depth dive. Now, I have already got a problem and this is one of the reasons we do it. We just did the battery change on this computer on the left and it is not displaying anything. It's not giving me a depth. The one on the right is telling me 34 feet. The one over here is just saying an error code so that's disturbing. So I don't know what's going on with this one. That's kind of bad. Uh, the cracking noises are just the pressure kind of building up. Yeah, it's a little creepy, but that's okay. Uh, so unfortunately, we have one computer here on the side that looks like it's got some serious issues. And we've got another one over here that is performing dead on perfect because we're reading about 52, 53 feet here, and that's exactly what we got on our master gauge. So before I go any further, I'm going to let it stabilize for a second. So obviously i got a serious problem on the one. So we're going to take this down a little bit more, at least get the one done. We're going to send this down to about 100 feet. This isn't too far off what a descent rate would be for the average diver, maybe a little quick at the start, but now we're kind of going down about average, you know. Most people descend about the same way they come up, maybe a little faster on the descent. So, 110, we'll go to 120, actually we'll take you to 130, which is, uh, you know, the limit for sport diving with your deep specialty. After that, you, you guarantee, they call it technical diving at that point, because a lot of time there's no way you can do those depths without going into decompression, and of course that means you get a decompression ceiling. Okay, so now we've got a little flashing thing on there, uh, because it's a little depth warning. It's got seven minutes of no deco time left on the computer. Our other one's still non-functional. And you can load the bar on the left, which is heavily loaded. You can see a lot of bars coming up on the left and that's the nitrogen loading that it's showing you so the nitrogen loading is coming up as your no deco time is going down all right so now we're going to start to bring the computer up on an ascent okay so we do that by letting air up out so you're going to hear a little hissing because it's the only way i can do it and we're going to start to see too the, uh, on the right side of the display on the computer, we should start to see an ascent rate graph. So the faster you come up, whoops, see I went too quick, so now it's beeping and going slow down. And if you see that when you're diving on your own computer, slow down, don't be coming up that quick, it's not good for you. This ascent at one foot a second at 118 feet is going to take 118 seconds to come back up at a safe ascent rate. It's 
very important that you actually understand your dive computer. It does, you don't have to be Mr. Wizard when it comes to understanding um, different algorithms and all these different things they talk about and M values and all that. But you do need to understand the settings on the computer. You need to understand if it's set in a conservative mode, if it's set on altitude, if you've accidentally put it into a gauge mode. I've seen all these situations with clients who've brought computers in and they're wondering, I had a gentleman one time many years ago brought the computer and says, oh, I bought this thing and, you know, it doesn't tell me any no-deco time or anything, but he'd gone through the settings on the computer and actually shut the computer off and turned it into a bottom timer. And I found that out actually because I downloaded his computer because I couldn't quite figure out what was going on and I realized he'd put it into gauge mode. And some computers have gauge mode because they use that to uh, be able to do specific dives. Let's say you wanted to do free diving with it, or maybe you were uh, doing uh, helium or whoop, a little too fast. You were doing uh, Trimex or something like that, and your computer wasn't made for Trimex, but you can go to dive tables for your mix and then just use the computer as a bottom timer. So those are important things to understand. So we're coming up a little bit faster, right at the limit of speed. And I'm doing this just, you know, you always want to keep it below that red line. You know, you don't want to be going too quick. People get coming up way too fast, and the danger of coming up too fast is uh, lung overexpansion injuries are obviously what it is. We see there are things that happen in diving from people who aren't careful. and. Uh, just like if you drive your car unsafely, if you dive unsafely, you can have problems. So coming up too quick can cause you problems. Um, lung overexpansion, um, if you are on the edge of possibly going into, de uh, pardon me, into deco, um, you could put yourself into a dangerous situation because all of a sudden you're rushing these bubbles out of your blood and you're not getting a good gas air exchange in your lungs. And you want to make sure it's a nice, steady, slow ascent. That one foot a second seems very long when you're on your way up. And that's one of the reasons too why if you're a newly certified diver or you don't have your advanced or that type of thing or don't have a lot of experience, you shouldn't be diving deep until you get some experience. Um, the advanced course takes you down uh, past 60 to 100 feet and a lot of the skills to teach you in that course is about, okay, how do you manage your gas to be aware of it, to monitor your gauges frequently, to always know how much air you're using. And one of the things we also encourage people to do is start thinking about their gas consumption. How much air are you breathing? And when I say gas, I mean you could be using nitrox. You could be using air. Uh, both. Ooh, okay, now we notice we got this computer. It just, we're going to get it up to 15 feet. It just displayed three minute. Okay, and it says three minute stop. We'll get it up to 15 feet because that's where the particular computer likes to do it. So it says stop three minutes. Stop is different than ceiling. In this particular computer, they actually go into a safety stop mode. Okay, very specific, easy to understand. It counts down from three minutes down to zero. If your computer, where it says stop on this particular screen, said ceiling, that's not a recommended safety stop. When you say ceiling, that means you cannot come up. You have put your computer into decompression mode. Now, why would that happen? Well, the most common reasons that would happen would be that you actually exceeded your no decompression times. But it's not uncommon to see a computer go into a required decompression stop because of a rapid ascent. So you may be coming up and you suddenly went really fast, your computer's beeping at you, I do this a couple times, the computer says, I'm going to put you into an actually required decompression stop because I'm a little scared that you might have uh, done something silly there and you could hurt yourself. So they'll do that. Now the other things we're seeing on the screen right now is it's counting down to two minutes. We still have the safety stop. We are at 16 feet currently. Um, where maximum depth shows on the computer at 133. Water temperature is 48 degrees because this came straight out of the tap here in Oshawa in March. <laughs> I pull this up a bit to 15. It's very critical too that you um, do not, if you're doing your safety stop and it's supposed to be at 15 feet, do it at 15 feet. Um, computers will often extend the time. So if you're at 18 feet, you're not off gassing at the proper rate. You want to get up to 15 feet. Read your manual. Every computer reads a little differently, but you know, commonly they'll say be at 15 feet for your safety stop and do it. One of the reasons they picked 15 feet is a 
safety stop area was because like 10 is ideal for a specific stop however people bounce up and down and things like that so they decided to go with 15 that was kind of in between 10 and 20 just to make it a little easier to maintain so 15 feet is about as deep as you should be on your safety stop and 10 is as shallow you should ever be on your safety stop otherwise you're not doing a safety stop We've got one minute left our total dive time was nine minutes oh our temperature of the water has come up a little bit not a lot <laughs> and uh, we're just counting it down Different computers on the market have different personalities and, and different things, and you'll see some are more conservative than others. Um, you can do all the research you want on it. Um, you can learn a lot of different things about what dive computers. There's all sorts of discussion on it. A lot of that discussion is really geared around the technical market where the decompression times are being done regularly and they don't want to have crazy amounts of deco. But for the average sport diver, most is good. Or most computers are just fine. Uh, okay, so here on the Zoop we see that the, the no deco time is a double line, which means it's or per, cleared, uh, the safety stop is cleared, so we're going to take this back up to the surface, still at a nice steady rate. Woo, a little cracking, <laughs> that's always exciting. And again, 15 feet to the surface, you still come up at a normal rate. You don't go flying up to the surface like Ballistic Bob and shoot yourself out of the water like a breaching whale. You know, you're going to pop along and it's not going to be a good day. Uh, so take it easy, come on up. Good. We're coming up to the surface now. We're just about to zero. You know, see the no-fly indicator has come up on the computer, the little airplane in this particular mode. Um, some will start a countdown timer. It all depends what it is. So. That's basically what we do. That's basically what we do on a pressure pot test for a computer. Uh, in this particular case, we actually identified a computer that's got a problem. So we're going to go and try and diagnose and troubleshoot that right now and see what's going on. Uh, the one computer functioned perfectly, and the other one we're going to work on. Thanks for visiting Dive Source today. Have a great day.